I built a system that reads Excel files and explains them using AI. I use Make and a few other tools to automate an entire process and I can ask questions, I can generate reports, I can generate graphs, I can do lots and lots of cool things once I have that data out of the Excel file. So let's jump in. So here's our uh, Make Canvas and I figured I would actually just build out the full scenario because it's uh, pretty straightforward. And I'm gonna start with a webhook. This webhook allows any data to be sent to this URL or whatever URL you you uh, generate when you create the webhook. And when data goes to the webhook, it then starts a scenario. So a little lightning bolt means that it's gonna run immediately whenever data hits this, this URL. So I've set up a basic button within the Notion database. And you can see that it's calling the webhook, which uses that exact, exact same URL from the webhook over here. And if you need a new webhook, you can always click add and, and generate a new one. But once you click add, it just pretty much gives you a new URL. So once you send data or add the URL here, you can tell it which data to send. So I'm just sending all the data from this Notion database. And if you're not familiar with Notion, it's very similar to Monday, ClickUp, many other tools, um, Salesforce even. And it's really just a bunch of properties that you create. And I've, for this example, I've created uh, just two. One status, which let, let, lets me change the status. And the other is a file upload property, which I'm just gonna call LinkedIn data export. And I've already attached the, the Excel file that I'm gonna use to this one but the file pretty much looks like this. And this is just a Excel file that's straight out of a LinkedIn export from someone's profile. So we get a bunch of data when we export the data from LinkedIn. So you get impression data, you get um, followers, you get top posts, you get a bunch of stuff. Uh, but we're just gonna focus on engagement and just get data from this one sheet for now. But this is kind of you know roughly what the data looks like, just a year's worth of years worth of daily impressions and engagement. And this is what I've attached to the Notion page here. And when I push the, let me close this button, uh, push it back in, which doesn't matter, didn't go anywhere. So when I push the button, it's gonna call the webhook. The webhook's not running right now, so it doesn't really matter. And if it did, it wouldn't do anything. So let's run our webhook. I just clicked run. And what the webhook does, it really just sits there and waits for some type of data to ping that URL. So just sitting there and wait infinitely until something hits it. So let's come over and push our button. And the button's gonna run the webhook automation. And you can see it ran successfully. And if I come back over here, you can see it completed. So once, uh, once the data, comp uh, once the webhook completed, there's no additional steps. So we can just look and see what data came through. And usually while I'm building these, I'm kind of going through each step and seeing what data I'm getting if I need it. Because the data structure is going to be a little different depending on which um, platform you're using. So I'm sure Monday looks very different than ClickUp, looks very different than Salesforce potentially. But if I come in here and click on LinkedIn data, I can see I have a files array and then a collection and then another collection and then a long string. And this is what we're going for. So we want this URL right here. And once we have this URL, we can do stuff with it. So this is the actual URL to the file. So you can see it's some type of uh, AWS server. So now what do we do with this file? We want to actually extract the file, do something with the file, download the file, and extract the data from it. And then we want to be able to query it with OpenAI. So I'm going to have the next module, which is our HTTP module. So the HTTP module really just goes and gets something. And we want it to get the file. So if you remember in our properties, it was within an array and an array and a collection. It was very deep. We have our file here. That's pretty much it. So we click save. It's going to get this file. And it's going to pretty much get the like, you know, basic for encoded data binary data. So if you were to look at it, it would look like a bunch of random uh, numbers, which we'll look at once we run it. Uh, and we need to do something with that. And the trick that I found 
the easiest way, and I haven't seen this in many other locations, is to end up using Google Drive to upload the file to Google Drive and converting it into a Google Sheet. And once it's a Google Sheet, you can query it very similar to Airtable or you know any type of any type of kind of table structure. But Google allows, you know, one, it's free, and two, it's super easy to use within Make. So we're going to uh, upload a file intermanually uh, into the folder. Actually, no, we're going to pick where the folder goes. So let's select from a list. My drive. I have some example folders in here. And so we're going to move it to our folder, put it to Excel files. And then I'm going to choose which file I want to upload. There's only one option. Nice thing about make it limits what I can use. So that's going to be the actual file data. And Google Drive, the Google Drive module is going to know what to do with that. And this is ultimately it's uploading it to the to the location. And once it's there, we need to, oh, sorry, the very important piece, which I almost forgot, is show advanced settings and convert a file. So this is where all the magic actually happens. So I found the easiest way is to convert it to a sheet. And then once it is a spreadsheet, we can now query it. So the next step is going to be, let's get that data. So let's see, Google Sheets. Um, what's it called? Get range values, because we want to get a range of values. And within that, we're going to search by path. Oh, sorry. Now we're going to enter manually with the spreadsheet ID, which is our file ID from the upload. And then now we need to give it a sheet name. So if you remember from our file, the sheet was called engagement. So I'm really just saying, you know, A1, sorry, A2, or I could do A1. You'll see here if I can change the headers to 366. Which is calm down here. Just start with two. We'll just skip the headers. If you if you wanted to say they have headers, you can. We don't really need it for this case. It, they don't really matter. So we'll say no. We'll skip them. Save. And then we now have the the data we're going to need. So let's run this, and I'll show you. There's a few a couple extra steps, but we're almost there already. So let's run this and see what happens. So we click Run, so our, again, our webhook's sitting there listening. Let's go back over to Notion. We have our Create Report button. Push Go. It's going to ping our webhook. It sent the data to our webhook. When it got the file, uploaded to Google Drive, and pulled the data from the sheet. Let's see what it pulled. So you can see we have a bunch of bundles. This is what we want. So now we have access to the data from that Excel file. All right, so once we have the data from the Excel file, now we just need to do some of these bundles. So these, this is returning a bunch of bundles, and we pretty much need to convert those bundles to something OpenAI, uh, the OpenAI module can understand. So if we if you were to connect our OpenAI module straight to here, it, and you try to put the bundles in there, it would just show, I think, collection or array, just like a string, like text, and it, it, OpenAI wouldn't actually know what to do with it. So you need an aggregator in between the two, and the one I usually use for this case is this table aggregator. Clean this up a little bit. This table aggregator, and this will just take the data from our sheets and organize it. So I'm saying, get the sheet, Give me, so this is a bunch of data that you're getting per bundle. Give me the columns ABC. And then I need to do some advanced settings because if I ran this, it would just be a blob of text. It would just be every single number next to each other, which is obviously not something ChatGPT can use. But I want to say do column separators for tabs and then do row separators, a new row. And what this is going to do is pretty much create um, a long text of you know 365 new rows and it's going to be the date the impression data and the engagement data for that day and you'll see i'll show you here in a second so it's now actually making this these bundles usable and turning them to text 
And so once they're text, now we can do whatever we want with it. So I added the OpenAI module. You know, I'm choosing the um, the you know ChatGPT with the so I can actually pick a, pro a prompt or write sorry write a prompt, pick a model. So you should do O3 Mini, big system. So it's the newest one. And then let's write a prompt. So we do message, just go with user, and then, you know, write something. So I have one written out, and this pretty much says, you know, the following data includes certain 65 days of data. The columns are date, daily impressions, daily engagement. OpenAI is brilliant, so it can figure out what you're talking about. I say, first group the daily impressions by month, identify interesting trends, and then return a short paragraph about those interesting trends. Uh, but, you know, I say keep it informal. And then the most important piece is the final thing. You say, here is the data. And I throw the text in from the last module. And, you know, this might need some more. I'll just get rid of it. It's fine. All right, let's run it. So, again, the webhook sitting here listening for some type of data to be sent to that webhook. I push the button. The Notion automation sends the data to that webhook. It starts our process. The data came in, got the file, uploaded to Google, converted to a Google Sheet, got the data from the Google Sheet, converted to text that we can actually use. And now OpenAI is processing the data. All right, it's done. Let's see what it came up with. So first, I don't, did I show this before? So first, if we look at what the output of this bundle was, so it turned all these bundles into just a bunch of text. So this text is what we could feed OpenAI, and OpenAI is brilliant, so it knows what to do with it. And then if we look at the message of what got sent, this was our super basic prompt that isn't really that good, but you know, it works. And then here's the data. So I pretty much just give it the data. I found that you can send a lot of data in the prompt without having to like train the data or create other types of sampling for the, the, the prompts. So if you start getting too much data, it can get kind of funky. But you know something like this, it just takes a few extra seconds to process it, but it does a great job. So let's see what it came came up with. So this was our, we just wanted some insights on this data. And here's our result. It says, early on impressions were really low, but then picked up steadily. July showed some bright spikes. Then September, October exploded. By early 2025, the numbers soared, suggesting a growing audience, even though there were some off days along the way. So let's go look at what this data actually graphs out to. So this is the data. This is what we just processed. And the insight was 100% correct. It's like, hey, there wasn't much data here. Big bump. And then it skyrocketed, which is exactly what this graph did. And this graph right here, this whole Notion page, landing page, was created with Make and Automations. And I have another video about that. So if you found this video useful, go check out that one. And hopefully it's helpful.